Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review of the Sofa Baton X1 Smart Remote with App Controlled Hub. So a big thanks goes out to Sofa Baton for sending me a free sample of their X1 Remote and Hub for me to try out and give my unbiased review. You'll receive the X1 Remote, Central Hub, two 4-foot USB-A to USB-C cables, one for charging the remote and one for the hub's power, single and double 6-foot infrared transmitters, a wall adapter, and a quick start menu and instruction guide. This is the X1 remote control. It measures 7.5 inches long, 1 and 3 quarter inches wide, and half an inch thick. At the top is a 1.5 by 2.5 inch OLED screen, with 3 inch diagonal. For best viewing clarity, remove the protective film on the front. This remote does not use disposable batteries, and instead charges an internal battery via USB-C. Simply plug the cable into the port on the bottom, and then into any powered USB port for charging. The functions on the remote are off, a back button for the remote's menus, an up-down scroll wheel for the remote's menus, and the rest of the controls are for your programmed devices, including a four-direction navigational click wheel with center OK button, back, home, and menu, plus and minus, mute, and up and down keys, rewind, play pause, and fast forward, as well as four colored miscellaneous keys. If you've used an Android streaming device before, then the bottom half of the remote probably looks pretty familiar. And if we put the X1 next to the Amazon Fire TV Stick remote, we can see that it has a similar style and layout, as well as features and functions. To wake up the menu on the X1 remote, click or move the scroll wheel. The screen will display the remote's remaining battery life, the Sofa Baton logo, and has three main functions, activities, devices, and set. Activities are like routines, so the remote can trigger a series of commands to one or more devices. Press the back button on the top to go back to the previous menu. The devices menu will have a list of all the devices you've added to the remote and set allows you to change the settings, like syncing the remote to a new hub, setting the LCD sleep timer, restarting the remote, and fix allows you to define the current power state of your devices and associated inputs for the different activities. This is the X1 hub. It has a glossy black finish and measures three and seven eighths inch square by three quarter inches thick. At the back, you have the Bluetooth button, USB-C power input, and one and two IR blaster outputs. On the bottom are four rubber feet to keep it from sliding on a flat surface, or optionally, you can mount it on screws using the two keyhole slots. At the front, the LED will flash blue when Bluetooth pairing is activated, as that's how it communicates with the remote. On top, this dot is where you'll point your other device's remotes if you need to manually program their signals into the hub. This hub will require constant power since it's what sends out the commands and IR signals, not the X1 remote itself. You'll need to plug the USB-C cable into it and then into the included wall adapter. The IR blaster extenders are optional and help the hub communicate with devices that its built-in 360 blaster doesn't have a line of sight to, like devices on shelves or behind cabinet doors. The emitters are pre-fitted with double-sided stickers so you can mount them in place. To set up the remote, download and install the Sofa Baton Smart Remote app and log in or register an account. Once logged in, select X1 then tap Set Up New Hub. Our hub is already plugged in, so we'll hit Next, then press the button on the back of the hub for 3 seconds, until the LED at the front starts blinking. We'll check off the box to confirm the light is blinking, then tap Next. It's going to ask for location access, which I'll allow, and now we can tap Sofa Baton X1. Next, select your home's Wi-Fi network and enter its password, then tap Provision. Once connected, tap OK. Now let's go ahead and select Connect to Hub, and you may or may not need to update the Hub's firmware now, so tap Confirm if prompted, tap the Hub, and select Update. The updates are usually pretty quick, and it took mine about 45 seconds to complete. Tap Connect to close the app, and then wait about 5 minutes before going back into it. When you reopen the app, you'll be able to start adding the remotes and command lists for your devices, so tap where it says Click to Add, and the first remote I want to add is a Fire TV. We can choose a custom icon for it, then tap Complete. Now, for the Fire TV, you'll need to turn it on with its original remote, and go into the settings in order to add the X1 as a new remote. The instructions are shown here in the app, so let's do that now. We'll go into the settings on the Fire TV, scroll over to controller and Bluetooth devices, 
Then choose Other Bluetooth Devices, and select Add. When the sofa baton pops up, select it. Then once you get the confirmation pop-up, you should be able to use the X1 right away to control it. And here you can see that I'm using the navigation buttons to scroll through, and I'm able to select apps and play selections just fine. Unfortunately though, some keys like volume, mute, and play pause on the remote were not programmed by default. So I needed to go into the app and select assign key and manually select commands for those buttons. Note that only the commands for play and pause are present in the commands list. So I still wasn't able to adjust volume or use the guide and app launch commands present on the original Fire TV remote. Since I do want to be able to change the volume, the next device I'll need to add is my soundbar, Polk's Magnify Mini AX. This product is pretty new, and the exact model wasn't in the code library, but I was able to get it added through the code base by verifying the functions through the testing menu. Now that I have both of these remotes added, I can create a hybrid remote with functions from both of them using the activities feature. This is where the magic happens. I'll tap add new activity and select both of these remotes. And I'll choose Bluetooth input since that's how I'll be using the speaker. Then tap next. Now confirm both devices are currently powered on. I want the volume and mute keys on the X1 to control the sound bar. Then I want the rest of the keys to control the Fire TV. You can always edit these later. I'll name this activity Combo Fire TV to distinguish it from the Fire TV only remote, then tap complete. If some of the buttons don't get assigned for some reason, you can manually link them up by tapping edit, then assign, choosing the key, selecting the device, then selecting a command. Interestingly, for activities, you can define up to two commands per button on the X1 for both short and long presses, and that gives you the flexibility to use the same button for different devices within the same activity. Now I tried adding my projector to the X1, but it wasn't in the code library, and none of the existing code bases worked for it, so I had to manually program this remote in. To do that, enter the information about the remote then for each key on the remote, tap Add Commands, give the key a name, then point the original remote at the dot icon on the hub and press the corresponding key on the original remote. After a few seconds, the command will appear on the list, and then you can add the next button. I did find it a bit strange that when naming the keys, I couldn't use special characters, like plus or minus, underscore, or backslash, despite these characters appearing in the commands in some of the existing code libraries. When testing the keys, I found that sometimes I had to trigger a command several times for it to work, and you can actually set this up automatically in the Repair Keys section, under Command Repeats, and set it to trigger up to three additional times. While a little labor-intensive, I was able to get the X1 working with my projector. If turning off your device requires multiple steps, like pressing the power button twice to confirm, you can set this up in the macro settings for turn on off menu. Note though that the off button in the top left corner of the X1 can't be used to turn off individual devices, as it only works for activities. You can see here that when I press the off button, even though I have the projector selected, nothing happens, and the remote shows me the activities selection. You'll also notice that the remote keys don't include dedicated on-off buttons for your devices, although they do appear in the Sofa Baton app. If you want to use the X1 for turning off and on individual devices, you can assign those commands to specific buttons, or trigger the soft keys in the app, create an activity just for that remote, or go into the command list for that device and trigger it from there. All commands for a device will show up in a list if you click on it, and you can access all the keys on the original remote as long as it's in the codebase library, even if you haven't assigned that command to a key on the X1. What's cool about the X1 Hub is that it also integrates with Amazon's smart AI assistant, Alexa, so you can use voice commands to trigger your activities as scenes. So for example, I created an activity for my projector, soundbar, and Fire TV stick called Theater. Alexa, turn on theater. Okay. And if we give the projector a moment to boot up, 
There we go. Alexa, turn off theater. Okay. The last feature I want to talk about is, if you ever lose or can't find the X1 remote, just head on into the app, select the Me account menu, go to X1 settings, and tap look for the X1 remote. A built-in speaker on the remote will start beeping loudly for 30 seconds to help you locate it. Once you've found it, press any key to stop the alarm. Overall, the X1 Universal Remote was easy to set up, has a pretty broad existing library of command codes for a lot of different devices. And even if you can't find your specific device, it's simple enough to have it learn your remote, albeit one key at a time. My favorite feature though, is the ability to mix and match multiple remotes in custom activities that allows you to chain multiple commands together so you can have a one-touch operation to turn on and off all your devices. Add to that voice command capability with Alexa routines and you can have your lights dim, devices turn on, and select all of your favorite settings with a simple phrase. Alexa, movie night. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.